In an era where artificial intelligence becomes our go-to problem solver, we're witnessing an unprecedented neurological transformation. AI neuroscientist and TED speaker Sarah Baldeo joins us this morning to uncover how using AI is literally changing the structure of your brain. Good morning, Sarah. Very interesting topic of conversation. Definitely. Hi, Kim. Happy Monday. We're kicking it off uh, running today. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Now, what is the difference between AI-assisted and independent problem solving? So think about when you were in school and you were trying to solve a math problem or you were doing research and you had a hypothesis. Normally, you know, back in my day, back in the 1900s, you go into a library, you do research, and sometimes some of that research wouldn't support your conclusion or your hypothesis. But what that did is it helped you form all of these critical thinking pathways. You went down all of these different types of rabbit holes, and it helped you to question and identify, um, you know, what is accurate and what's not accurate, as opposed to with generative AI, you're just being given the right answer, and you're not even questioning or researching. And so what your brain does is it starts to clean house. So when you stop using those critical thinking pathways, it just cleans house and goes through what's called neural pruning. And it gets rid of all those brain cells because you're not using your critical thinking pathways anymore. Interesting. Sarah, you've never made me feel so old when, until you said back in my day in the 1900s. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> using gener generative AI tools, you know, it's a great time saver. But what happens to our problem solving abilities when we rely on it? So, you know, in the example that I, I just used, you're doing research. And essentially, I want you to think about what happens in your brain. So there's there's different parts of your brain right? The, the center part of your brain controls emotion and it controls instinct. The front part of your brain right here, um, and I, I have my handy dandy model here, right at the front of your brain, this is the part of your brain that needs to be activated. And so when you type a question into chat GPT, hey, tell me what the square root of pi is, it just gives you the answer. You don't actually have to do any work you don't actually have to access any of your memories from the past. And so that's the difference. When you're just sitting in a library and you're doing research, you're accessing your hippocampus, which is your memory center. You're accessing your frontal cortex, which is your critical thinking problems. You might be in high stress because you're trying to do research. So you've got adrenaline pumping. When you type it into ChatGPT, you just get an answer. And most of the time, you just accept it. So it's a vastly different neurological experience that you have with Gen AI versus real research. So Sarah, is there a specific age group that mo is most at risk regarding AI use? So Kim, um, we're both moms, so you'll appreciate this. Uh, I have a teenager who tells me I was born in the 1900s. And yes, <laughs> I have caught him using ChatGPT for his homework. The problem is when children are born, that center part of their brain, that limbic system, which is right here in the center, that develops first because we need it for survival. The frontal cortex develops last and it's still developing as children age all the way through adolescence. And so when children are using ChatGPT for their homework, they are not developing their frontal cortex and that neural pruning, that loss of brain cells happens sooner. So it's actually impacting these youngest populations, these children, because they're not developing that frontal prefrontal cortex because they never got the chance to, because they're just relying on generative AI tools. So by no means am I suggesting we shouldn't be using AI tools. We just have to use them in the right way. Sarah, we've run out of time, but man, we could talk about this for half the day, I'm sure. Thank you very yeah. much for your insight. Thanks, Kim. Take care. If you'd like to connect with Sarah, you can visit sarahbaldeo.com.